Welcome back. Well, today we have uh, some hot topics uh, for JW News around the world. Uh, the one we're going to look at is uh, blood transfusions. It's where the doctors, the courts have ordered that the doctors could administer a blood transfusion. Why? Because the uh, adult who, they're not giving the name and so forth, but could be a like an 18-year-old maybe because the family got all involved, but didn't have a blood card on them. So uh, I thought it's a good opportunity to talk about the blood thing and uh, why it's important not to have a blood card. And when you get the blood card, let's say you're a youth, you're in it, you know, maybe you're even a teenager, 18, 19, 20, 21, you're still living at home. So you're still under the uh, care of your, kind of your parents who are, perhaps active JWs and you've woken up a bit and realized that it's not worth risking your life over. We're going to show you why you should not risk your life over these things. And we're going to show you that the governing body has said so themselves. So if you st stay tuned with us, we're going to talk about all these things. Now I want to, um, I want to look here, uh, at um, some questions, right? Mind stretching. Have you ever heard of mind stretching? Well, um, that's what happens when you uh, leave the uh, Jehovah's Witness religion. Your mind mind starts to stretch. They call it mind stretching. What does it mean? It means you reach beyond your preconceptions. You learn to think of things in ways you've never thought of before. Mind stretching. That's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the Bible and we're going to look at blood and we're going to allow our minds to accept these things. They're written in the Bible, in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. So mind stretching, number two, it acquires tools which to critically examine and evaluate new ideas, including your own cherished ones. So if you're a Jehovah's Witness like I was all my life, uh, there was a lot of mind stretching going on. And uh, I realized that uh, it has to go slower. I did a little research on this. I kind of went at it fairly hard. And so uh, what does it say? It says, when you say let's stretch our thinking on this. So mind stretching. So let's stretch our thinking on this. That's what this is. We mean it's to be creative. Rather, uh, it's a creative exercise rather than purely logical. So think of it as a chance to play with the possibilities and imagine the implications if various futures happen to unfold. So when we talk about, about blood and carrying that blood card, let's say, let's stretch our mind a bit. And let's say that, I don't know, it kind of fell out of your wallet. But, you know, you don't want your mom to find it, right? So, well, it kind of got trampled on and tore up a bit and thrown to the bottom of the trash can. The bottom. Yeah, no one's going to see it there. Kind of fell out. So you, you, could, you could be creative. You could create some creative exercises to get rid of that blood card. And uh, think, think of it as a chance, chance to play with possibilities. Imagine... We're going to read a story here of a young man who was in a car accident and uh, he is in a precarious situation. But first, let's go to another thought here. What does it mean to stretch your mind? Think of it as a chance to play with possibilities. And here's the other thing. What uh, does stretching our mind, what does it do? Does it calm the mind or does it agitate it? Well, here's what it says. Stretching has been shown to increase serotonin levels. Now, those are good feeling drugs. And we're getting them for free. And we're not taking anything from a pharmaceutical. So, stretching has been shown to increase serotonin levels, uh, i.e. the hormone that helps stabilize our mood, reduce stress, overall makes us feel good which causes a, de a decrease in depression and anxiety. So when learning how to stretch, it's very important not to rush yourself 
and instead ease into this stretching. You know, it's like taking a new drug from a pharmaceutical. You've got to ease into those things. Um, <laughs> this is free, stretching your mind. So how do you do it? Well, you open your mind, you be creative, you accept and rationalize on future possibilities. It's mind stretching. It requires a little bit of work. But the key here is it's important not to rush yourself. And I found when I was uh, starting out, I was rushing myself and I like to get things done really quick. And there was times that it uh, agitated me. You know, I'd look at material, look at other people's material and it would agitate me. But that's just part of the process. Don't let it scare you away. Now, the second thing I want to talk about, or the first thing before we get into the blood article and what happened to this young man, we're going to take a look at uh, something that's happening this year. And I'm going to get it up on the display for you here. This is a Be Free Protest 2024. And I'm going to put a link to this in this video. And if you're a creator or anybody else out there, copy these links, copy any of our links off our site and share them with people. But this link in particular, we want to get it out and do a, a mass campaign. we got the pressure going right now. JW Org's making some changes. They need to make some bigger changes, like this blood doctrine. We're going to talk about that in a second. But uh, the Be Free po Protest 2024, uh, it's, it's bringing out here, September is National Suicide Prevention Month in the USA. And uh, so it talks about what's happening during that month. That might be a good month. But what they're saying here is it's not necessarily going to be on October 31st. Uh, that might not be the best conducive time for you to make it there. You know, perhaps the summer holidays is better. September's summer holidays. You can pack up. You can go on a little road trip. It's easier. You know, when the kids are in school, it's hard uh, in October. It's harder to do that kind of a thing. So, um, so what Be Free is saying this year is they would like our input. So, so this is a little link. And it's for all of us to get some input in. And it's a little form here. Once you load it in, it, it self-populates with your web browser. And uh, will you attend the Be Free this year is one of the questions. Yes, no, maybe. Which state or country are you traveling from? Are you an activist for human rights or an ally of the cause? Uh, what does that mean? It means uh, an activist is someone that's out proclaiming. That's what we do online. Um, an ally is someone in the background that's supporting it. Be free is an ally to helping us get this out there. And uh, so this is how this all works. Are you interested in volunteering? Yes or no? Are you interested in being a sponsor? Yes or no? And have you uh, or someone you've known been affiliated with any of these traumatic events? And check all of them that apply, like suicide, shine, shunning, uh, child sex abuse, refusal of blood, blood transfusions, and others. And if you choose uh, other or above, would you mind sharing a bit more? So we're learning. So folks, this is for all of us to get this in, out there, the whole XJW community. And, and to share this. And the sooner we can get this information into Be Free, the sooner they'll come up with a date and we can start planning this great event. We've got to keep the pressure on folks. It's working. And with more pressure, will come more changes. That's just how things work. So let's move forward. We're going to look at uh, what's happening and what the courts are doing right now. So yes, we'll look at the courts, what they're doing right now. And uh, the orders uh, from the court here, this is in Irish, Ireland. Um, and, and, and this is on three articles. This is real news. This is just one of the articles I chose to uh, show you. The orders are gra granted, allowing hospital to give blood transfusions to Jehovah's Witnesses if necessary. That's the headlines here. As long as you don't have a blood card, get rid of that blood card. Fell out of your wallet. You know, maybe you're at school. That's a good place to get rid of these things. Uh, throw it in the waste paper bucket in the boys' washroom, girls' washroom. Get rid of them. You're at work. Get It falls out of your purse. These, these blood cards just disappear. It's amazing. 
Well, a man is in, is in, in intensive care after a road traffic incident and relatives cannot locate the document, saying he does not want to receive blood due to his beliefs. And what happened? Well, the High Court has made orders allowing a hospital to give blood transfusions, if necessary, to a member of Jehovah's Witness faith. The order was made on Wednesday by Mr. Justice Tony O'Connor, who said he accepted the patient's life may be on the line and that may, he may uh, need a blood transfusion. So the judge said that he respected the man's religious beliefs, but the court was satisfied that he currently lacks a capacity to make an informed decision about the medical care he has been provided. And the court noted that no advance care directive, a document held by members of Jehovah's Witnesses. And in case you don't know what that is, here's, I just pulled this up. This is what it looks like uh, all over the page here. These are their little cards and they um, have a meeting once a year. Everyone gets a card and uh, they ring the bell and everyone stands up and signs their card. That's kind of how it is. It's monkey see, monkey do. There's no thought. There's no attorneys, no lawyers consulted, nothing. This is a serious, serious document, folks. Um, this, this should be outlawed around the world that they're uh, coming in without a lawyer, without people in the privacy of their lawyer signing this. Parents are having their children sign this th these things. So uh, it's serious, folks. And this is what, what we're doing. This is what activism is about. Uh, we're a part of it. Some of us have lost loved ones due to this um, demonic doctrine of this cult. Because this is not in the Bible, you follow along, allow your minds to stretch a bit, look at the scriptures. This is not supported anywhere in the Bible. Anywhere in the Bible, it's not supported. And we'll show you in a bit. Now, the court noted that no advance care directive, a document held by members of Jehovah's Witness faith, stating that they're not to be giving any blood or blood products under any circumstances, has been provided to the hospital in relation to this man. So the court heard that if the man's situation deteriorated, he may need a blood transfusion to either save his life or to avoid incurring any further injuries. The patient, a young man who cannot be identified for legal reasons, is currently in intensive care following a serious road traffic incident. Now, those in charge of his care are hopeful he will recover. But at present, the man is on a ventilator, receiving medication through a tube. He cannot communi communicate with anyone. So the, uh, the hospital said that, uh, uh, or Donald McGinnis BL for, for the hospital said that for religious reasons, the man's family were not prepared to consent to him being given any blood or blood products. And the council said that the man does not currently require a transfusion. But if his situation were to deteriorate, then such an action might be required to save his life to prevent further injury. Now, Mr. McGinnis uh, said the problem was complicated by the fact that the fo following his admission to the hospital, and once it was learned that he is a Jehovah's Witness, the man gave conflicting instructions about if he would accept a blood transfusion. You see, folks, some of the members just they ring the bell at the hall they sign the thing and everyone just assumes that everyone believes the same thing but not everyone in that kingdom hall believes in this stuff and uh, because some uh, actually read the bible we're going to show you three scriptures okay so he said further uh, complicating issues was the uh, hospital um, the, the council said the hospital accepts Due to his injuries, the man lacks a mental capacity to either consent or refuse such a treatment. So because he was on the ventilator, um, he was, he's not in a situation to make a decision. So he said further complicating issues was that the hospital had been told by the man's family that he had signed a document stating he would refuse blood transfusions in all circumstances due to his religious beliefs. However, this document could not be located by the man's family despite an extensive search, counsel said. 
So that's the, that's the key, folks. If you're in the organization, get rid of that blood card. The man's wife, while reaffirming their objection to blood transfusions on faith grounds, told the court that the family were not opposed to the hospital's application. The court heard that the family hopes the man's condition improves to the degree that a transfusion would not be required. So after granting the hospital the order, the judge said the hospital could return to the court and seek discharge the order if the man's health improved to the extent that he regains capacity and he is able to give clear instructions about what he wants for his treatment. So that's, that's what it is. It's all about you, you as the adult. Uh, what are you going to allow? Are you going to allow the courts, are you going to allow yourself to die over a religion's or a group of men's decision? Well, let's carry a little further. Let's carry on a little further and see what that group of men actually say. And also, the governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. And so it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. Well, knowing this, then, we are not embarrassed about adjustments that are made, uh, nor do, is an apology needed for not getting it exactly right previously. We understand this is how Jehovah operates. He reveals matters gradually when it is needed. Okay, so there's what the Watchtower says. If they don't get it right, they really don't care. Like, you could die over this, but, you know, if, if they don't get it right, if, they, if they, they don't get these scriptures right, and folks, they have changed their mind. At one time, no blood, uh, and then you could take fractions, and then the, more fractions and more things they allow. So now they allow more things. It's conscientious but they're still going hard after the blood. Why? The whole blood thing should be a completely conscientious thing. Elders are not doctors. Elders are not lawyers. This has to stop in religions. I, I don't know of any other religion that does this on earth. That's why we know that this is a sect. It's not, it's not a normal charity religion that helps, helps people helps orphans and widows. This religion does not do that. In fact, they say, no, no, we don't help children. We don't help anybody. We don't care for anybody. You see, a religion that's pure and undefiled before God, James 1 and 29, says that they should be helping orphans and widows. That's what it says. But that's why the Jehovah's Witness organization is one of the richest organizations, because people leave all their money to it, their estates, and this religion does not spend the money into hospitals, nursing homes, and caring and helping people. But it wants their children to die over this evil blood doctrine. Now let's look at uh, what the Bible says about this. Now the governing body says, eh, we don't really care. We're going to make mistakes. We're not inspired. We don't get it right. We're not going to apologize either. Now, do you really want to take your life-saving advice from, from that kind of counsel? I'd fire the guy. If that was my counsel, I'd fire him. He'd be gone. Okay, well, let's look at what the Bible says. Okay, so here's the, we're going to run through this rather rapidly. Uh, Acts, uh, these are the scriptures that Jehovah's Witnesses get their big idea about not taking a, a, a medical practice to save their life. So this is about eating eating meat. There, you see there was no blood transfusions, no medical practices back then. But we're going to look at, one, how Jesus viewed this in a second. But first of all, here's where they get it from. Acts 15 and 20. But you should write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, uh, immorality, and, and uh, what's been strangled, and from blood. Now this was regarding a meeting. Uh, Acts, uh, these scriptures all talk about it. And I'll, I'll pin all this in, the, uh, in my descriptions below so you have all the scriptures. <clears throat> now, now, Acts uh, 15 and 20, we all know that scripture is Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. Acts 15 and 29, same thing, says the same thing. And Acts 21 and 25, but as for the Gen Gentiles who have, been, who have believed... We have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, from blood and 
would strangle. So they had a meeting. What was happening there? Uh, none of the Gentiles, Gentiles wanted to get circumcised to become Christian. And uh, so they uh, went down to Jerusalem, had a meeting with the Jews, Jewish rabbis, and said, look, Gentiles, uh, they're not going to get circumcised. So, so they made these rules. They said, well, if, if, you, if they do this, then we're good. So they went back and said, well, this is what you do. So no one's going to die over this stuff. This is not a death penalty thing. This is not something to take your life over. Why? Well, number one, let's, uh, let's go forth, forth to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, warning against idolatry. So we're going to go right to the bottom there. Do all things for the glory of God. So here it is. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor, right? So eat whatever is sold in the market without raising any question on the ground of conscience. This is talking about uh, uh, strangled, you know, meat that's sacrificed to idols. Same thing, could have blood in it. You see, Jehovah's Witnesses teach when you go to the market, look for byproducts. Don't buy anything with blood in it. Some Jehovah's Witnesses don't even buy cat or dog food with, blood, with byproducts in it. Uh, byproducts means that it could or may have blood products in it. Okay, so, yeah, they're saying eat whatever's sold in the market. So that's what uh, Paul's telling the Corinthians. And he goes on in verse 26, For the earth is the Lord's and, and the fullest. And if one uh, of the unbelievers invites you to dinner, you know, like a Jehovah's Witness, if they go to a stranger's house, a worldly person's house, they're inquiring what's in the sausage, what's in the garlic sausage. Is there byproducts? Is there byproducts in the wieners? Well, you can't feed my kids those wieners. There's byproducts in them. That's blood products. Oh, yeah, we, we don't accept blood. Like, this is the big facade that they throw on. All Jehovah's Witnesses do this all over. And it's based on don't eat, don't eat the blood products. But here, Paul's saying, don't raise a question about it. It's a conscience matter. He says, if, if, if one of the unbelievers invites you to dinner and you're disposed to go and eat, eat whatever's set before you without raising any question on the ground of conscience. You see, this is a conscience matter. It's not a death matter, a life and death matter. No, not that. It's a conscious matter. Uh, Paul says, uh, but if someone says to you uh, it's offered in sacrifice, you know, then you're not going to eat it, right? You know, uh, if a Jew's sitting with you there, and, and we know that's again, and I'm a Gentile, and he, I'm at dinner, at he, he, he's at dinner with me, and he says, well, is that sacrifice to an idol, or could be blood in it? And the host says, well, maybe, you know, you know because of him, I'm not going to eat it either. You know, I don't, I'm his buddy. I don't want to stumble him. That's what this says. Let's read the scriptures, folks. That's, that's what the scriptures say. Verse 29, I do not mean your conscience, but this, for why should my liberty be determined by someone else's conscience? You know, why should I determine my fate just because the governing body wants me, those nine men want me to sign that blood card? Why should I determine my fate over that? This is a conscience matter. Okay, my final argument here is Jesus taught to save the child in the well. On the Sabbath, he taught us to break the law, break any law when it comes to saving someone's life. You know, if you're on the highway and you had to break a law and maybe block traffic with your vehicle, that's breaking a law. You didn't get a permit. You're going to block traffic because you're going to save a child that's on the highway. It was an accident. You might use your vehicle and put things up and do things that are against the law to save someone's life. You see, that's what we do. That's what Jesus taught the child in the well. And he said to them in Luke 14 and 15, which of you having a son or an ox that has fallen into the well on the Sabbath day, and we all know it, you, you don't do anything on the Sabbath day. You know, like it's like uh, being a JW, you know, you, do, you can't break any of these rules, you know. Um, but what does Jesus say? Will not he immediately pull him out? You see, life over death, folks. Life over death. Uh, he said to them, which of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit, pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? Oh, how much more value is, is a man than a sheep. So it is lawful to do good 
on the Sabbath. It is okay to break the laws regarding blood, folks, when it comes to saving lives. And, and regardless, it, it, this is misinterpreted. Anyways, this Acts 15 is misinterpreted. So it's conscience, strictly conscience. And it's more so for a Jew. And by the way, Jews, all Jews take blood transfusions. You're not going to hurt their conscience. And that's what this is about. This has nothing to do with anything more than that. It was a meeting that went to Jerusalem. Jehovah's Witnesses just built this big thing out of it, and they have to be so different. But they're, they're stealing people's lives. There's blood guilt all over their hands. I cannot see how this religion can repair itself, folks. But we have to keep bringing this to light to the authorities. That's our job. So folks, also in our uh, descriptions below, we have um, a link to Letters for Change. And uh, that's an important thing. I'm going to pull that up. Okay, so this is Letters for Change. This is for the Canada and U.S. And uh, you can go in here. You just press uh, English. You have to press English or Spanish, English or Spanish. And uh, then here you can locate your rep. You find who your rep is in the U.S. and Canada. And you there's an advocacy letter. Uh, you just pull that up. You can copy and paste it. There it is. It's that easy. And then you can put your own story in. There's all kinds of links there. So you can read through that. The work is done for us, folks. And then we get that letter out. We get it to our parliament. It'll, sh it'll direct you there. It'll help you to uh, get it to your parliament. Find your MP. Once you find your rep, you can email or copy and paste your letter onto their format. You know, you send them a letter. And the more letters we get out across the uh, North America, the more we are going to make change in this organization regarding this blood policy that is, is a do it's an indoctrination. It's not real. It's facade. It's a facade. The scriptures do not support losing your life, and neither do they. We've seen the governing body member himself saying they're not even inspired. And they've made so many changes, so many mistakes. They, they blame it on Jehovah, though. And that's a sad thing, and they say we, we're not even going to apologize. So if you lose your life and uh, in six months or a month or tomorrow, they say, yeah, it's conscientious now, but you lose your life today, you're gone. You're done. And this organization's making so many changes. And uh, that, so, well, that brings an end, I think, to our program. Okay, I guess we have a last-minute news request here, the Indian Express. And you remember that bombing uh, that happened? This uh, Martin guy set up these bombs, blew up a kingdom hall. Well, they've got their forensic part of it done, and... Uh, this is the blast during a Jehovah's Witness prayer meeting, they called it, October 29, 2023. It left eight dead and several injured. The team uh, probing the incident will file the charge sheet, sheet in the next couple of weeks. So they wanted to get all the forensics done, and it was made with um, conventional gunpowder, I guess, is what they're showing here. The gadgets he used, that's what they're checking out. So they had a kind of 180 day deadline to file this charge sheet to prevent Martin from getting statutory bail <clears throat> is what this is all about. So it's to keep him in jail. So Martin, he's an estranged member of the Jehovah's Witnesses and he had told the police that he carried out the attacks to exact vengeance on the Christian group after they repeatedly ignored his requests to go for course correction whatever that means. So that's uh, just a little bit of an update on that uh, Indian news uh, bombing. Okay, so uh, what do we take home today? Well, we do a little bit of mind stretching. We look at the Bible. We see that, you know what? This whole blood thing is nonsense. It's conscientious. So that's what mind stretching does. It makes you feel good. It, it takes a lot of stress off. Imagine this, you're, you're, you're thinking that if, if, if you don't do this, you're not going to please Jehovah. But, but these men, they said they're not inspired. 
And they've already made so many changes on this policy. And in fact, it wasn't even a policy way back then, but uh, blood's become part of a, ma a medicine now. They, they use it in many different ways. And um, when have the elders become doctors, uh, practitioners, psychologists? You know, this all has to stop, folks. Uh, the elders are not equipped for this. They, they can't handle it. It's a lot of stress on them. We ran an art, uh, a video last night, uh, Joe and Fran's show, Wednesday nights. And that's really a platform that helps a lot of people that are coming out. It's an infirmary, so to speak. People come out, they need a chance, to, a platform to talk, and that's part of healing. You see, when we're shunned, our wounds are open, always open. We never heal as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses because we're always shunned. We talked about that. That's part of the psychology. They're realizing that this shunning is a real harmful policy. And we look at that, that bombing in India. This is all part of shunning. And it's such, such a dangerous thing. It affects different members in different ways. And that's why we have also a Discord channel. It's a channel 24 hours a day you can get into. There's people there. There's uh, robots that translate to uh, different languages. I think it can handle different, up to 50 languages uh, if need be. And uh, there's a few set up. So if you have a language that we're not there, let us know and we'll get that going in your language. So this is allowing Jehovah's Witnesses around the world to communicate on a platform, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, where they can talk openly. They can vent openly without being afraid of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses getting in and seeing what's going on. Okay, so we have a couple platforms there, and we invite you all to attend it. And the biggest thing is the Be Free. We want to we get our uh, Be Free note in. And uh, if we can attend, if you can't attend, that's fine. Let them know, but send them a note. It's all done for you. You just have to click the link in the descriptions here. And uh, then we can get going with Be Free and uh, keep the pressure on. So until next time, folks, keep living your life with love. See you then. Bye for now. It's time for us to go. We entered the farmer's market one last time to say our goodbyes. Nina wished us much confidence in our new journey ahead as we disappeared through the mist, but this time to a new land. To be continued in Book 3, Finding Purpose. Thank you.